and girls, Colonial Productions is proud to announce the debut of Jurassic Kingdom Lockdown. Here to guide you through this containment lockdown is our very own facility operations director and dinosaur expert, Miss Kayla Colonia. Hello everyone, welcome to the fair. Are you guys ready to have some fun? Woo! You don't sound so sure about that. Maybe it was the wrong question. Are we ready to have lots of fun? Woo! Awesome, welcome to the show. How about a quick show of hands? How many of you guys like dinosaurs? Beautiful, that's what I like to see. Millions and millions of years ago, there were thousands of different types of species of dinosaurs that lived all across the world. Some of them walked on land, swam the seas, and made the skies our natural habitat. We're going to get this show started with you guys right here from our fossil table. The first one we're going to share is very cool, but there are some bad news that goes with it. When we discovered our first footprint, we were unable to find any other evidence to go with it to tell us the dino it belonged to. That is the sad reality. Not always do we get a bunch of pieces out there that say, Hi, I'm your dinosaur. But with extensive research, help from our databases, we opportunity to narrow them down. The not so fun part of the job. But with the extensive research, we were able to narrow this back to a group of dinosaurs called arithiopods. Now what I can tell you about arithiopod dinosaurs are primarily two things. They were herbivores, they walked upright using their back two legs, whereas most herbivores walked around using all fours. Unfortunately, it is where the search stopped. There were a lot of different types of arithiopods to consider for one footprint. But we do have an arithiopod for you guys to meet today, so you can see the full picture. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please put your hands together. Help me welcome out our beautiful Paraceralophus, Miss Charlotte. Charlotte's on her way out to say hi to you guys. As always, you're welcome up to say hello to her. While she's making her rounds, we only have one small but very important rule today at Jurassic Kingdom, that there is no violence. Getting a pokey, pulling tails, punching. You always get the drink. You don't like a good crowd on wasting time. While she's on her way around, I will make you aware of an additional detail. What literally? Details. You want to be mindful of tails. Tails have minds of their own. They come in all shapes and sizes, but more often than not. What happens when the tail is not on purpose? You've been warned. Now let's talk Charlotte. Again, she is one of our Arinthiopods, a two-legged herbivore. But the Parasaurolophus likes to give us a run for the money. She can use both two and four legs to walk around. When I say four legs, I mean arms. Their arms were long enough to assist them grazing on lower-lying shrubs and grasses. So technically, walking, crawling, using all fours, it may not make them an Arinthiopod. But her primary source of transportation stays in the back two legs, securing her to the Arinthia pod category, leaving her right there. Now, one last thing about Charlotte. The Parasaurolophus remains were only discovered around 100 years ago in the cultures of where we now call Asia and Canada. We believe the main reason that these beautiful creatures were discovered in those regions of the world could be because of their favorite food source and nesting material, bamboo. Bamboo is one of the older living plants for our planet. When you guys go home and look up dinos, check out some other prehistoric plants and bugs. You never know what you'll see. Please go around and make it with the time with relatives of some that did it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'd love to keep Miss Charlotte with us for the rest of the day. She's a beautiful co-host, but we have a lot of dinos for you guys to meet. for our beautiful Charlotte. She did an awesome job. We're going to get her back inside for some snacks. The, the two snacks. Churros. Churros. Churros sold. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's here for one last time. Everyone say bye, Charlotte. Dinosaurs on divas. Do not let them tell you different. Now, we are going to continue along with the fossil table. The next one we're going to share is super cool. It is one of my personal favorites. But before I tell you about it, I want to hear from you guys first. Would anyone like to take a guess at what it looks like? You can say it out loud. It is a rock now. It's a great guess. What'd you say? A T Rex. Oh, I hear a. It could be a T Rex egg, but they're a little bit bigger. It is that this is a beautiful egg, uh, but would you like to know my favorite answer? Poop! It's funny. 
here, but it's not poop, it is an egg. This egg belonged to one of our four legged herbivores. It belonged to a triceratops. Now when we discovered the eggs, we were super excited, but a little sad. We realized they didn't all get the opportunity to hatch, but you know what they say, life finds a way. Thanks to that egg, we happen to have a two month old baby triceratops for you guys to meet. Please put your hands together and help me welcome out our sweet little girl, Miss Sarah. Okay, we're doing that. <laughs> Sarah's on her way out to say hi to you guys. And again, you're welcome to the fence line to meet her. Again, she is coming directly to the fence. So if you'd like to meet Sarah, the fence line is where you gotta be. So come on up, find a spot. You can line up for us. Try not to stand behind somebody. That way she can come directly to you. I'm gonna tell you a few quick things about Miss Sarah. She is small, but there's a lot of growing up for her left to do. And another one. That's not a triceratops, though. Are you sleepy? Sleepiosaurus right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack, our baby Brachiosaurus. They do not part from one another. They are BFS for life. So again, I'm going to tell you a few things about both of our babies. So of course, Sarah will eventually grow to be around the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. For any of us 90s, 80s babies out there, our punch buggy of dinosaurs here at Jurassic Kingdom. Although we discovered ceratops remain so a lot of shapes and sizes across the world. Some of their species can grow to become the size of SUV-sized vehicles or larger, depending on the regions of the world they were discovered and their specific species of ceratops combined. It would dictate how large they get and the different shapes of their crowns. Jack's a different story. He will inevitably become one of the largest land-roaming herbivore giants our planet has ever seen. A cross between what we would call an elephant meat giraffe, but ten times the size. They're enormous creatures and leave behind an enormous impression on our planet, literally. They left behind one of the largest and deepest impacted footprints we've ever discovered among paleontology. Finding one is our favorite because of all of the information it gives us. We can use a little bit about how big they would have been and about how much they weigh from a single footprint. Now, Sarah has a lot of cool features she'll grow into. One of the ones we're looking forward to are the horns. And those two horns on the forehead, one across the beak line, are going to allow her to defend herself. Family and nesting grounds from predators that get too close. They can use them for hunting purposes as well as her namesake. Those three horns are likely call her specific species of ceratops, the triceratops. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it looks like the babies have finished up, but I think it's time for one last big round of applause for them. They did a beautiful job. Everyone say bye, babies. Hasta la vista, babies. We are going to continue along with this fossil table, guys. Now, the next set we're going to discuss belong to a different category of dino. We discussed some of our herbivores, but now it's time for the carnivorous category. The first one we're gonna share from this set is a skull. Now this skull belonged to a dinosaur called Coelophysis. We believe Coelophysis could have been more- Famous for them on the feet. You would know those dinos best by the names of 
Velociraptors. But before I continue on, I should probably make a quick announcement from safe and secure behind my souvenir table. Remember, no sudden moves. Getting up, running away, fleeing the show area. My next guest is slightly intimidating and a tad bit impatient. You may recognize her from Jurassic World. This is our beautiful, slightly over the top at all times. She is a Velociraptor! It's not easy, or intelligent, but just really, really way around However, you guys look pretty daring. So I'm gonna give you guys a little hint. If you extend your arms, completely you straight up and hold the palms open flat, she recognizes the gesture. Not only as a movie aesthetic, it helps, but it's how she's been trained to approach people. Calmly. Calmly is a good one. Now while she's on her way around the terrorizing world, again we do ask that you're just kind, no violence. We're, we're going to keep her pretty contained as best as we can. And I'm going to tell you a few things about Velociraptors. Not the same old boring details. We got that. The movies, they tell us a lot. But what they failed to mention on the beautiful silver screen of Hollywood is really how loud they can be. And that's what we're going to hit on in her today. Velociraptors have singing voices of nightmares. Unfortunately, not trying to serenade us with a pretty song, she is calling her friends. I don't mean like a cell phone. I mean she is locating other Velociraptors for miles and miles around. They hear the call, they know what it's for, it is a dinner bell, and she is letting her friends know that she sees a good looking buffet out here. I do not mean the midway food, I'm talking about you people and your darling children. But we're going to be okay. Not a lot of Velociraptors in the immediate area. What we have in close proximity is a lot of fun animal activity. I eat pig races. I just heard the bugle go off. So we, we know what that means. All of our dangerous dinos need to be put back inside. Before they, and when I mean they, I mean she, decides to jump the pig. Until then, the closest relative we believe to have around for Meg 
is the great white. Great white compared to Meg is kind of small. We'll give you a better size reference. How many of you have okay, seen a school bus before? A good bit of a school. For those of you that may not have, big, long, yellow bus. Great white can almost reach the length of what? From the end of the nose to the back fin. Some have been measured nearly at, and they were record-breaking great whites. Not many around since Jaws. Uh, Jaws is a movie reference. You can ask Grandpa about <laughs> Megalodon was a different story. This particular giant was considered to be so massive and huge, they could nearly swallow said school bus whole. We're not making it back to school on time. Extra summer! Yay, Megalodon! Woo! They're not having their smart kids. They do not want to be shark poop. All right, last fossil, set of teeth. Who can tell me what they belong to? You guys, we're friends now. You can just yell the answers out. I'll give you a hint. The T! The T-Rex was an enormous creature. 20 feet tall, weighing tons and tons, which is why... It did not fit in my car. That, that disassembles. But we're going to do the next best thing. You've met a lot of my babies. I want you to meet my biggest baby. And I, he's a big baby. Sparky, can you come out and say hi to these guys? I think they've been waiting all day long to meet you, too. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is our two-year-old T-Rex. His name is Sparky. Big guy. Can you do me a favor? I want you to look at everybody and smile. Show them how Pearly lights, hands up. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, you're shy. You didn't brush your teeth today. Oh, I didn't think so. Is that your job? Alright. Anyway, look. Uh, let's think I got the cameras out there. Look for no cameras. You love the camera. You love phones, TikTok, whatnot. How about we do the uh, the the selfie face? of a selfie face. But you can pay close attention to how small the teeth are. Like I said, he's only two. There's a lot of growing up left to do with his teeth. Now, while he's on his way around to say hi, as always, you are welcome to say hello. But we just want to do a quick reminder that there, again, is no violence. Getting poking, punching, pulling kills, things that you've heard it. You know, it's for the newcomers that get vote. Now, let's talk to you. We get T-Rex a bad reputation. Long ago, we discovered T-Rex remains. We made them out to be a big, mean, aggressive monster. Could you blame us with all those teeth? We studied the remains closer and further, and we found out they are more so protective than aggressive. They're very protective over their little ones. Babies especially. They didn't have a lot of offspring, little ones. They protected the ones they had. Down to the last tooth and nail was the motto, and they took it literally. We also gave them a bath. Like eat him, he's right there. I don't know if that's cool parenting or just like, I don't know, please probably not. Accept it, challenge accepted. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, they're very protective over their young. They are more so scavengers and critters. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. Okay. Alright, I know. You're so cute. You're so snuggly. What's going on? Oh. That's what you want? Do you need to get your snug today? Alright. Alright, then. That's fine. That, yeah, that's fine. Uh, anyway, more so, scavengers and predators, they're not really built for the hunt. They are very top-heavy. Clumsy. Maybe mean, trips or falls are good stuff. You can become a target. It's not a good one for these guys, but they are highly intelligent and nearly unparalleled senses. They wait for a small, more capable predator to drag down its meal. Now they go miles away. They come in with bold colors, obnoxious roars. Are you mocking me? Rude. Rude. But you're cute. I'll forgive it. I'll forgive it. Anyway, you know what I think is going on? He likes treats. I need a volunteer from the audience. I don't trust you back there by yourself. Look at all these hands! You see all the hands? You know what happens before you get a treat? Yeah! Dinner time! Strong, brave, strong, brave. I'm gonna need a two-hand person. How about you? Are you strong? 
Are you great? Come on, right down here. Because if he comes through the table, then it's going to make a mess. All right, you're holding on to this. Two hands, one here, one there. A little bit out. Perfect. That's perfect. You're just going to hold it out like that. That's all you got to do. Beautiful. Hang in there with me. Big guy. Woo! Stop terrorizing the village. <laughs> right around. And he's got the bone. She is all dressed up today. She said, I was ready for rain or shine. She's got the convertible hood on. You know, she's ready to go. Here we go. Right here. Just the bone. Just the bone. 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 The